that doesn't look like us. We deal with the, the media that always label us as thugs. We have people that look at us because if we sag, then we're just wrong. We got the guy down in Florida who's teaching his kids how to use guns properly, but because he has tattoos on his body, he's looked at as a gang member. It's like everything that we do in society, we're always a target of some sort. And it's, it doesn't matter if it's with our women, non-women. It's just, it's just we deal with so much that our lifestyle, we just like, fuck it. We just going to deal with it. And it's just like, but at some point, for, the, for, for us to avoid depression and dealing with uh, psychosis, I guess that's what they call it, like that first stage of psychosis. Like, how do we really avoid that? How do we start acknowledging those emotions? Ooh, that Marcel, that, that's, that's a loaded question right there, but it's a good one because I'm, I'm thinking of so many, the, I'm, I'm seeing in my mind just the faces of Black men that I've counseled over the years. And, you know, honestly, what has brought men to my office in particular has either been they have been mandated by their work, um, their family has completely fallen apart, which sometimes it looks like the wife leaving or kids no longer talking to them. Um, or even just being pushed by family members to really get some help and support. And so, you know, I, I, so l let me let me answer the question this way. I, I think there's there's a few layers to that question. So I think with, with Black men addressing their mental health or even just their feelings in general, I think it starts with just asking yourself, like, what is going on with me? What is going on with me? And that's a question that a lot of people or women too struggle with answering that, right? It's asking what is going on with me and trying to put words to that. Because usually what I find is that my, uh, my, my black men struggle with being able to put words to their experience. Black men, not even just black men, even white men have a great way of being able to intellectualize their feelings and talk all, you know, they, they talk real good talk you in a freaking circle and not have not have talked about anything of substance when it comes to their feelings of what's really going on, what's really the heart of the matter. And so that, that's where I would say start is just asking yourself, what is going on for me? Being uh, curious about why you're doing what you're doing, right? Even asking yourself questions like when, let's say if you're talking to your wife or your girlfriend or even the kids and you respond in a way that comes off as a negative to other people, you can ask yourself, okay, when they said this to me, how did that, what did that do in me? How did that make me feel? Where did I feel that in my body, right? Some people may say my heart started racing or they may say my stomach just got into knots or I felt really shaky all over my body, right? Like that's anxiety, but at least trying to put words to it so that if you decide to meet with a the therapist or even if you talk to somebody that has awareness about mental health, they can help you put words to your experience, right? Like some... I had one client that was like, I just don't feel right. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, do you need an ambulance? Like, what do you mean? And he, all he could say is, I just don't feel right. I don't feel right in my body. I don't feel good. And he was suffering with severe anxiety. But he would have gotten overlooked even if he went to eat. I remember him going to the ER and they were just like, nothing's wrong with you, right? Like, because he could not put words to how he was feeling. 